On the 19th of November 1919, the United States Senate rejected the Treaty of Versailles, falling short of the required two-thirds majority to ratify. Welcome to HistoryPod. The Treaty of Versailles marked the official end of the First World War and laid the foundation for the League of Nations, an international organisation aimed at preventing future conflicts. For President Wilson, the treaty was the embodiment of his idealistic vision for a more peaceful and just world. He believed that the League of Nations, which he had proposed, would provide a forum for nations to resolve disputes peacefully. However, a major obstacle to the treaty's ratification was Wilson's strained working relationship with Senator Henry Cabot Lodge, the influential chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Lodge, who was a prominent Republican, had fundamental disagreements with Wilson on key treaty provisions. Article 10, in particular, of the Covenant of the League of Nations represented Wilson's unshakable belief in collective security. Lodge and his Republican counterparts, however, saw it as a threat to American sovereignty. Republicans preferred unilateral action, asserting that America should independently determine its involvement in global conflicts. Wilson was aiming for international cooperation, but many Republicans prioritised safeguarding American interests above anything else. Wilson embarked on a nationwide tour to try to secure public support for the treaty, but his efforts were in vain. Lodge and Senate Republicans proposed reservations, and on November 19, 1919, the Senate voted down the Treaty of Versailles by 55 in favour to 39, falling short of the required two-thirds majority. It was the first time that the Senate had ever rejected a peace treaty. This rejection had profound consequences. While it signalled a definitive adoption of isolationism in American foreign policy, the absence of the United States from the League of Nations undermined the organisation's effectiveness from the outset. 